Welcome to the Dice Tower, a series of video reviews about board and card games. Here are your hosts, Tom Vassell and Sam Healy. Today we're going to take a look at Heap, which is the next uh, game in a series that was started with Infernal Contraption, kind of a goblin universe. Mm -hmm. And Heap is about building vehicles and attacking others with them, <clears throat> which I think is a decent theme. I sure hope uh, Games Workshop doesn't get a look at this, because <laughs> they will they will cry copyright infringement. All right. Well, they don't own goblins. Let's take a look. Okay. Each player is going to take a gyro hopper, a doom buggy, a scrap hog, and a big rig. All right, so you have these four vehicles that you're going to have in front of you. And then players are going to take a handful of six cards from the deck, and each turn is going to begin. Now, the, the way the turns happen is going to be players are going to be taking turns in turn order, and the first thing players are going to do on their turn is draw up the six cards. They can discard as many as they want before they draw. The second thing they're going to do is they're going to place uh, a part on their vehicles. So when I place a part on a vehicle, this part here, you can see, only can go on the Doom Buggy. And it has a, it's a specific type of part. It's an atomic engine, but I can only have one type of each part on the Doom Buggy. If I look through here and I see the, the junk trunk, that's a different kind, so I'm allowed to put both of them in. In fact, I could put both of them in on my turn. I'm only allowed to put two on the vehicle. So I could say I'm putting this on the Doom Buggy, and I'm putting this on the Doom Buggy. Or I could put a retro rotor on the gyrocopter, and then I could say I'm going to put an atomic ramjet on the scrap hog. Now, when you play these cards, let's take a closer look at one of the cards. When you play each card, it gives you a special ability in the bodge area. As you can see, each one has a different area, and that bodge area comes into play when you attach that card to a vehicle. For example, this one here lets you repair something. This lets you damage the player to your left. This card lets you draw a card, and then everybody else draws a card. This one lets you draw a card and then discard a card. Um, many of the cards allow you to put cards in a special pile. Uh, basically, put them aside called hauling them. You're going to be able to attach these cards later. And that's what that symbol means. And there's many different symbols in the bodge area. Again, like I said, they have different things. Everybody loses a card, but then you can repair one. Uh, you pick someone else to lose a card. And so you can attach these as long as they go in the right vehicle. After each player has attached these to their vehicle, then players are going to choose one of their vehicles to send out to try and find more scraps from the pile. So they could pick which one, unless one of the players has played a special ability where they decide, you know, this turn we're going to fight with Doom Buggies. Otherwise, people send out their different vehicles. So let's say I have my Gyro Hopper and I decide to send that out. Now, one of the players is going to be the instigator, and they are going to go first. And when they go, they're going to turn the top card over from the deck, and they're going to place it in the middle of the table. So let's take a closer look here at this card. At this point in time, we only care about this top left-hand corner. Here, there, this shows a red defense and an attack, and here basically that's an attack of any color. So the instigator says that's a yellow attack. So the next player looks frantically through his hand and fortunately finds a card with a yellow shield on it. So he places that there. He blocks the yellow attack. And now it's a red attack against the next player who must play a red shield. And that becomes a yellow attack. And this continues to go. Here I can block with anything. And now this is a wild attack which can be blocked by any shield. So the next player plays a red and a yellow. And you can keep doing this until you cannot play a card or you choose not to play a card. Either way, you're out of the running that time. Now, when you play cards, sometimes your pieces on your vehicle will give you special abilities. Look at this retro rotor. This is where you use the rush side. When I play a green attack, it allows me to draw two and someone else to draw one card. That's a special ability that I can play. 
This one here is a special ability that only comes to play if I win the battle. This one comes into play if my attack card happens to be a bike. I can make someone else lose a card. But each special ability can only be used once during the round. And you keep going till everyone's eliminated but one person. Then the winner is likely, each vehicle here you can see, has an effect that if you win, you get to haul two more cards. And haul, like I said, is that special pile. You get to add two more cards to it if you already had some cards there. And you can look at those cards. All the cards, all players will do this. They'll look at their cards and they will then immediately attach them to their vehicles. And this is going to continue as players slowly ramp up all their vehicles and add different parts to the different vehicles. Again, following the rules, putting them on the right ones and only having one of each type on each vehicle. When one player has at least three parts on all four of their vehicles, then we start the final rush. In the final rush, the first thing we're going to do, instead of going and sending one vehicle out, you're going to send out all four vehicles, and any vehicle that has at least three cards on it goes turbo. We turn it over, which gives them a special ability, and lets you draw more cards at the beginning of the final rush. Then we do the exact same kind of battle, except this time you have a ton of special abilities to choose from. And this final battle will likely take as long as pretty much the rest of the game put together. The winner of this final battle is the winner of the game. All right, one of the things you want to know about Heap, first of all, is that the game is fairly quick, especially once you know what you're doing. At first, you're like, what do these, these icons mean? But once you get those icons down, it's really fast. Yeah. And then the second thing you need to realize is that the battle at the end is everything, and everything else in the game is merely minor build-up to that point. Mm. <laughs> you're going to get stuff on your vehicles. You might get more than other people, but it all comes down to that final battle, which includes a healthy dollop of luck, and also knowing the right time to use your different parts of your vehicles. I would say it's more than just a healthy dollop of luck. I would say it's probably a couple heaping scoops of luck. Um, you, you, could, you could win the final battle in the first round if you just pick the right card that your opponents don't have. And I think that would be the, difficult. The, the likelihood of that actually happening is, is low. I'll give you that. However, it could happen. Um, I guess it's about the same as rolling the right number of pips on a die at the right moment. I, I, maybe it's the same. Don't I'll... get, sorry, don't get all worked up about getting all these cool little fixins on your, on your different vehicles because it probably won't help you much. I think that there seems to be a pretty obvious strategy and that's to, if possible, play the same attack color the whole time and run your opponent out of one of the colors that they have in defense. Right. If you can do that, and then I, I can't think of an alternative strategy to that. Why would you spread your colors out unless you're like shooting for the one he doesn't have? Right. But how would you know what that one is? Now, if there were cards that let you look at your opponent's hand. Yeah, that would be over. Yeah, that'd be probably too analytical. I think the artwork is great. I really like it. It's very cartoony, and I really like the names of things on the cards, the, the names of the different parts, whether it's a nail bed, uh, the atomic motor, the, let's see what some of the funnier ones are, the magnetron zapper, the volcanic ramjet, the quake and take zapper, you know, um, the dump trunk, the big old blaster. That, mm -hmm. You know, it's your typical, maybe it is from, fan, uh, from Games orky. Workshop because they do it's that orky. weird orky stuff. I like that. I like the, the idea. It does work with the theme, but you really have to go into this, in my opinion, not expecting a whole lot out of it. Right. We're not, I will not even remotely call this a strategic game. It's very tactical, and even tactical, it's kind of just try to pull off a cool That's combo. A even tactical is a stretch. Um, yeah, the cool combos is, is neat. You know, kind of envisioning, envisioning how you're putting all this onto your vehicles during the game is, is interesting. But I think this is really just a goofy game to have fun with. It's not meant to be taken lightly. The artwork definitely leads you down that road of, of being goofy and not taking it very seriously. Um, so have fun with it, and I think you'll be okay. All in all, I'm going to have to give this one neutral thumbs to the flats or i don't know <laughs> whatever thumbs it is thumbs to the thumbs to the flats 
Maybe a little bit positive. I would not say, no, never, if you said to play a game like this, but I would probably never suggest it because if I'm going to play a, light, a, a fun, light, fast game, there's many other ones. Mm -hmm. I think the theme's interesting, but I'm kind of mediocre on this, although I think there's a subset. This is the kind of game that I can see 40K fanatics playing while they're waiting for their game to start. Yeah. This is the kind of game that I could see people who, who like take that style games. Teenage boys. Yeah, I, I really think they would enjoy this, and maybe that's you, then I think you would enjoy this. So I'm, I'm kind of neutral on this one. Okay. So he gives it five thumbs up. No, I'm not going to give it five thumbs Six. up. Six! Because um, I didn't bring out a whole lot of enjoyment from the game. However, it was mild fun, in my opinion. So I'm going to give this one heaping bowl of 0.5 thumbs. <laughs> well, that's like a whole lot of thumbs then if it... <laughs> Not necessarily. <laughs> Try because to put them it, all together and get all one puts thumb. It together to 0.5. So it's a big heaping pile of heap. thumb bits. Heap. 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 Okay, well, there we go. Yeah. Goblins. What's the word? Warg. War. No. War! Ah. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews, as well as our top rated audio podcast at dicetower.com. You can also find the latest board game news at dicetowernews.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Fun Again Games, the world's best game source. Fun Again Games has over 5,000 games available. Check them out at funagain.com.